This is Lawe Lift by Mobile As TV, and I'm your host for Mobile As TV on the show. Remember, this podcast really focuses on self development and personal improvement topics with the occasion of expanded professionals who come to the show to share their insights on topics and subjects on the personal development. Now, today, I'm thrilled to have Raymond Newman on the show with me. Now, Raymond Newman is the co founder and CEO at New Mavericks, right? A, new, a renowned coaching and mindset firm, which has helped leaders protect and enhance their team's achievement and progress to optimize their mental capacity and leadership skills. Hi, Raymond, welcome to the show. Thank you, Omar Bola. Uh, fantastic to be here. Looking forward to a very positively disruptive uh, conversation with you about self improvement and leadership and uh, mindset. Sure, I love that line, disruptive. Now I'm looking forward to that. So let's kick that show started. Raymond, how do leaders influence organization um, effectiveness? Well, there's a great saying that, you know, it's been around for a while and it's that uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. You may have heard of it. And that's true, you know, a good culture uh, harmonious people within themselves, working with harmoniously other people, uh, creates a great culture, right? A cooperative, you know, coherent culture. And then that allows the best strategies and ideas to come to the surface and to be executed on. Now, <clears throat> it's great. It's a great saying. It's very truthful. But on another level, how do we really enhance the culture? And we can't really enhance the culture unless we enhance the mindset. And we can't really enhance the mindset unless we enhance the consciousness and the awareness and the brain functioning, the degree of coherence in the brain of the individuals. So I have a new saying that kind of elaborates on culture eats strategy for breakfast. And that is consciousness and mindset eats culture and strategy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> and so if we want to have a more effective organization, then there has to be individuals and especially the leaders who have the most significant influence on the decision-making and the performance of the company. They have to be developing their consciousness and their mindset. And that is what allows an individual to be more coherent. It allows them to develop what they've found in neuroscience to be world-class brain functioning. And what that means is that there's a lot of coherence and orderliness in the brain functioning, that there's a coherence between the amygdala, which is in the limbic lower part of the brain, which gives us our impulses to act, and the prefrontal cortex, which is like the CEO of the brain. This 30% front part of the brain is what allows us to make very clear strategic decisions. Now, if this is stressed, and this is tired, and this is fatigued, or this is not coherent, then what happens is poor decisions are made. You don't see the possibilities. You don't see the threats. You're not able to avert the problems before they arise. You're not able to see the opportunities as they arise. So as an individual develops their consciousness, develops their mindset, their brain becomes more coherent, more orderly. <clears throat> and they've found that world-class athletes and business leaders and musicians, when they're performing at their best, they're making their best decisions they have a lot of what they call global alpha coherence in their brain functioning. Now, what that means in layman's terms is that they see the bigger picture and they also see the finer details on how best to fulfill that bigger picture, that vision in their mind. <clears throat> so the more that we can develop an individual and their brain functioning, then the more that's going to translate into creating a better culture, a more harmonious, orderly, coherent culture, which creates better strategy, which creates better performance in business, more effectiveness. Right. Now, you, you emphasize uh, mindset, right? And I believe that that's very important, right? So how does mindset really, how does it affect leadership? Well, it, it affects it in a way that, you know, we have to be sure that we're making a decision based on we're perceiving the right truth, right? Because we all know at the end of the day, truth always triumphs. So if we have a mindset that we are acting and we're making decisions based on what is truthful. And what is truthful is what is good for the whole, right? It's not just good for you and me or a few people. It's good for the whole organization. It's good for the whole planet. It's good for the whole country. And so the more that we can have this more developed evolutionary mindset that we're doing 
and making decisions and acting based on what's good for the whole, then naturally, you know, we're going to make decisions that are going to be life supporting, that are going to uplift the whole. They're going to uplift ourselves as well in the process. They're not going to cause damage to ourselves, either our health or wealth or happiness or relationships. Right. Thank you for that submission. Now let's talk about the ingredients of leadership. We talk about direction, protection, and harder. Why is this um, critical to effective and successful leadership? Yeah, very good question. So obviously, you know, negativity exists in the world. Negativity is a part of life. Now that doesn't mean we have to suffer from negativity. Negativity is simply there to remind us to come back to truth, to come back to coherence, to come back to ourselves, to come back to a, a truthful mindset. And so the more that we can become coherent from within, then the more we keep negativity at bay. Negativity is, can be extremely powerful and strong and, and it can show up like that, but inherently it's inherently weak. So as soon as we become strong and more coherent from the inside, then naturally we're able to avert negativity. We're able to keep it at bay. We're not being, being so affected by it. So we have this experience, you know, we've had certain experiences where the world goes through some turmoil. There's a destructive thing that happens. It happened in 2007, 2008 with the global financial crisis. It happens, it's happening in the pandemic. And it's a sign that life, nature, is giving us a signal that we're off track. We're not making the most evolutionary decisions and actions. So therefore, we have to enliven this quality of protection. Now, protection is not something I'm talking about in terms of security system or a surveillance system or a legal contract or insurance contract. Those are all useful, but they're reactionary protection. They're after the fact, after something has happened, when it's generally too late and costs and loss of time and money and energy have already been incurred. So the protection I'm talking about is the protection that allows you to proactively avert the problem before it arises. So if we're healthy and strong, we have a strong mind, we have a strong nervous system, we have a strong immune system, then naturally we're able to take care of negativity, we're able to dissolve it, we're able to neutralize it before it has a damaging influence on, on us. So in 2007, 2008, I come out of being a monk for 10 years. And I went to New York City to do an acting program to reintegrate to the world. And I have my own, my own story in terms of, you know, why I became a monk. And I'll get to that in a second. But basically, uh, I went to New York City to kind of integrate back into the world, take the experience that I have of developing myself at a very deep level, meditating eight hours a day, seven days a week for 10 years, and coming back into the world and wanting to serve the world, but wasn't sure how I was gonna serve the world. So I just did this acting program to take all this inner connection I had to myself and you know, develop creating connection with others. And great acting is about great connection. And so I was there in New York City and I was having a great time doing this acting program. I ended up being there for a couple of years, 2007, 2008, just doing acting, training and performing. And the global financial crisis was, was going on around me. And I could see the stress in the city, the stress on people's faces as they're, they, they were laid off, they were uncertain about their future. And it got me thinking is why did these very smart, very intelligent business leaders cause a financial calamity for themselves, for their businesses, and for the world? And it made me realize that they had the same problem that I did. I burned out as an athlete in my late teens, early 20s, uh, trying to qualify for the World Junior Championships and the 1500 meters. And I was very focused on achieving that goal. I was all about the training, all about putting in the effort. And my coach at the time, who was actually an Olympic gold medal winning coach, he said to me, if you keep up your progress and your training and you stay healthy, there's no reason why you can't go to the Olympics. And I thought, great. So I was all in on that. And I missed qualifying for the World Junior Championships by a couple of seconds. And I got very sick. I had a lot of digestive problems, a lot of respiratory problems, kept me up most nights for over six months. I literally became an insomniac. I became depressed. And I realized how come I was putting in all the action, all the effort, and I still wasn't able to hit my goal. And the reason why is because I was developing myself on the outside, but I wasn't developing myself on the inside. I wasn't knowing how to 
know when to do enough training and not do too much training, when to rest, when to recover properly. And my body literally broke down. So the same thing happened with the global financial crisis is all these leaders were making these decisions that were based on out of development, out of achievement. And some of them were based on greed and vanity and lust and, and all these vices that really can cause us to, to cause a, a problem for ourselves and others. And so that made me realize at that point in time that, oh, my purpose is to help leaders in, with their inner development so that they can come from a place of fulfillment and not just thinking that the goal of life is achievement, right? Because achievement comes and goes. A fulfillment is something that we get to keep and maintain. And the more that we can come from a place of fulfillment, which means we're content and happy and fulfilled and at peace in our mind and our heart, and we know who we are and we know what our purpose is, then naturally achievement is a byproduct of being in that fulfilled state. We call that state the leadership state. And this is where we're able to make decisions that are good for ourselves, good for others, and we're able to protect. And this is ideally what a great leader does. A great leader is able to protect the progress of themselves, their team, their people, and the world. And if a leader is able to do that, they are a great leader. If they, they can't do that primary duty of a leader to protect, then they're not really a leader, right? They're all about themselves and ultimately it'll lead to destruction in some way, shape or form. Right, thank you for that. Now, the question is, um, why should a leader really, why should they care or why should a leader care about mental health? Is it that serious? Is it that important? Why should they care? They should sure. care be because ultimately everybody is an extension of ourselves. So whatever we do to others, we're also doing to ourselves, right? And some leader may, you know, may be doing something that's, that's not good for themselves or others and they may think, oh, it's okay, it's okay. But if it's not good, then ultimately it'll show up at some point in the future, right? And so leaders can't lead without having people who want to support them and their vision, right? So leaders require people to lead. And so if they're not prepared to take care of them and treat them well and protect them and help them progress, then they're ultimately not going to fulfill their vision because nobody, as we all know, we can't do the life by ourselves. You know, we have to do it with other people. We have to be in collaboration and cooperation with other people. So this is why leaders have to really put people first. And we've found that a company can have a really great product. They can have the best product in the market. But if they're not taking care of their people and developing their people, then or developing the mindset of their people, then that product's not going to actually work. You can actually have a company with a better culture around people, around developing people, around developing better mindset, and not have the best product, but they can still outperform a company with a better product. Because at the end of the day, people are buying a company, buying products from a company because they feel good about that company and how that company operates and how that leader expresses themselves and, and the values that they have. Right. Now, talking about um, putting people first, right, and that's very important, especially in organization, effectiveness and success. Now, for leaders to function properly, their followers need powers too. I want to ask you this question. Is this assertion valid enough? Uh, you mean powers, you mean responsibilities? That's right. Like for leaders to function properly, right, um, their followers also need powers too. So I'm asking you this question. Is this assertion, yeah. is it valid enough? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean... Every leader doesn't want to have to make every single decision in the company. They just want to have to make the most important decisions. So they need to empower other people to make those more micro decisions that they're responsible for their and, and their area of domain. And because there's a lot of burden and a lot of pressure and a lot of stress that comes with being a CEO or a leader of an organization. And you don't want to bear the pressure and accountability of all that stress. You want to diffuse that by giving that responsibility to other people. And that will actually lighten your load as a leader. It will empower people to want to grow as leaders themselves. And it will literally lift you up the ranks. You know, there's an analogy that we give when we talk with our CEO clients. It's like, you know, if you want to rise up the ranks, then you have to like help others rise up the ranks. So there's an example of an award-winning corn grower. So he, this corn grower, every year he would win the prize for the best corn. And finally they interviewed him. They said, how come you win every year? Why do you win every year? And he said, well, what I do is I take my best seeds 
and I give them to my neighboring corn growers because I don't want their bad seeds getting into my crop. I want their crops to have good quality crops. So the more he's uplifting his competitors around him, then the more he gets uplifted himself. Right. Now, a lot of the facts that you introduce um, protection in your business strategy, your coaching uh, program, right? That's very important now. We wrote, oh. the, we wrote the book about it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the science of protection. Our leaders gain an unfair advantage to create stellar sources. Incredible. Right. So how can the book be assessed? I, I believe that you're in the heart of the book. How can we get the book? So the book's available on Amazon.com. Uh, or Amazon in, in any country, pretty much around the world. Uh, you can also go to scienceofprotection.org. You can get the ebook there. We also have a, a leadership protection toolkit there. We give some few extra tools for leaders to really assess, you know, their ability to protect themselves and and their team and their company. And yeah, and uh, there's also a protection quotient. We have a we call it a PQ assessment protection quotient. So you can know your PQ score if you go to uh, newmavericks.com. Then uh, you'll see on the website there. There's a link to to do that assessment on yourself. Right now, quickly rounding up, um, um, how can leaders how can leaders protect themselves for sources, especially in these uncertain times? Can you quickly run through that? Sure. So in the, in the book, The Science of Protection, what we do is we break down, you know, how that how that happens. So the first component of that is purification. So we all accumulate stresses and bad impressions or have vices like greed, anger, lust, vanity, jealousy, you know, all these things that can really undermine ourselves. Right. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to purify them. We want to decrease the stress we want to dissolve the stresses so that progress can unfold in a more superfluid frictionless way we have a saying that purification leads to progress if you're not progressing in some way then some purification has to happen either in yourself in your relationships and the way you're behaving in some way like that so it's being able to purify that so that you are able to then be in the next component of the science of protection is coherent you can have this coherence. Your brain is more orderly. You have this global alpha functioning in your brain. Your whole brain is waking up to see all the possibilities. And in that state, you're able to unify things. You're able to connect the dots. They found that managers with a lot more connectivity in their brain functioning, they're able to connect the dots and function at a higher level than leaders that don't have that sort of connectivity in their brain. So that's the second aspect. The third aspect is being in that leadership state. And being in that leadership state is we are able to recognize and be awake and alert to what is truthful, what is good for the whole. And then based on being in that state of awareness, you're able to see the potential threats or dangers and avert them before they do damage. And you're able to see those great positive opportunities and possibilities as they arise. So in this leadership state, then this evolves into having more capacity. You know, we all have a capacity to handle certain things. And the more uh, breadth and depth of our capacity to do things, to see things, then the more we're able to handle any situation we're in, whether it's a great problem or whether it's a great opportunity that we're dealing with, we have to have the capacity to handle it. So I can give you the analogy of, of capacity. So uh, on a bowl, if I take a, a teaspoon of salt and I put it into a glass of water, are you going to taste that salt in that water? Uh, sort of in some way I can, right? Because as I've been, as I dissolving, you know, it's already, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not going to taste it. Taste I'm going to definitely you'll taste it. Yeah, you'll taste That's it. right. Yeah. So if I take another teaspoon of salt and I put it into a lake, a big huge lake are you likely to, to taste that salt not to tell <laughs> exactly so the more capacity the more expanded our capacity is then the less we're affected by things the more we're able to be in our good mindset and our positive mindset and not be affected by all the pressures and the stresses the negativity that can be going on or the pandemic and we're able to do okay what's good for my health what's good for my evolution what's good for my progress Right, so that's why it's very important to have good good capacity. Oh, great! Love the analogy. Great. 
And then the next aspect of the science of protection is when you have good capacity, then you're more likely to take spontaneous right actions. Okay. So timely, right, evolutionary action for yourself, for others. Right. And the more that you're able to do this, then the more you're able to build up what we call deserving power. So deserving power means, you know, sometimes we want things, we want things, we, I want this. But we don't ultimately get what we want. We get what we deserve, right? And we get what we deserve because we've taken good actions. We've built, we've given good value like you are on your podcast, right? And that builds up a lot of positive energy. And literally life, nature cannot deny you fulfilling what you want because you've deserved it. You know, you, you've, you've put in the good value. You've given good positive energy to and good knowledge or good, uh, good attention, good love, good... Uh, just money, even giving money, donating money to help other people out with water or shelter or things like that. You know, that all builds up. It's all good, positive actions that creates deserving power, good merit, so that your environment wants to support you, you know, because you're supporting your environment, right? The more that we support our environment, the more our environment wants to support us. Now the so, law of attraction at work day. <laughs> I said the law of attraction at work day. Yes, yes. And then, and then you have that protection for what you want to see happen, for what you want to fulfill. So an example of this is one of our clients. Um, he saw an opportunity to grow his company from $3 billion to $6 billion through what they call a reverse merger acquisition. So his smaller, better performing company acquiring a bigger but less performing company. So he sees this vision. This happens a lot. Leaders have a vision, but then that the environment that they're in, the shareholders, the stock market, has to support that vision. Otherwise, right. they can't lead. That's right. So he goes to his major shareholders and said, hey, we, I see this vision that we need to acquire this company to really stabilize and grow our, our status in this industry. And the major shareholders said, no, we don't want to do this. It's going to ruin the stock price, the culture, and the performance of the company. So he comes back to us and says, guys, I know we have to do it. I see that this is what the next step for us, but I'm not getting support from our major shareholders. What do I do? And we said, well, you can either intellectually debate them and try and argue them and, and coerce them into seeing your vision, or we can just work on you really owning this value and this vision at a deeper level, right? So that you really embody it, that you're already experiencing it, right? That you already see it, that you already have the mindset that it's going to happen. Right. So we did that for about three or four weeks. And then we said, okay, we think you're ready. Go and ask them again. He goes, gives the talk to them. Every one of those major shareholders put their hand up and say, okay, let's do it. And they're not saying that they agree with, with his idea or his vision, but they believe in him because he was projecting that he already owned this reality. You know, right. if you ever wonder why people get given a lot of money like Elon Musk, it's because he, he owns what he's, he's doing. He, he's like embodied that he's already experiencing it. He already sees it. And then he's able to convey it to others so that they see it also and they buy into it and they want to support it. So that was the first obstacle he overcome, getting the shareholders to support the, the, the vision. The next thing was making the deal work, long hours, tight timeframes, many multiple <laughs> no-go uh, scenarios, many possibilities for stress that's not going to happen. But despite all that, he felt very calm. He felt very relaxed. And he felt like he was the eye of the storm. Uh, there's a lot of details going on in those sort of big merger acquisitions. And at the end of the day, the deal fell into place. And the deal fell into place because he just owned it. He saw it, he owned it, and then the environment just started supporting it. That's incredible. That's very important. Yes. Thank you so much, um, Roman and Newman, for your incredible insight, especially on the topic of this discussion, talking about leadership, mindset, and talking about mental capacity. That's very important for such time as this. Do you have any project you're working on? Sorry, sorry what was that? Do you have any project you're working on or in the pipeline? Project? Yeah, we're, we're actually looking to, you know, we work mostly with CEOs of public companies. So they're very kind of exclusive bunch of people. <laughs> uh, they're running multi-million, multi-billion dollar companies. And we want to take all that wisdom that we've accumulated over the last 20 years and we want to put it into an app, right? And so, because the world needs, everybody needs to be their own leader. Everybody needs to step into a leadership state for themselves, right? Because a lot of the world can get into this drift of just following others, right? And following others, you don't know where they're going to lead you, right? So you need to develop your own leadership intelligence, your own leadership brain, so that you can think for yourself, 
You can really make decisions, empowering decisions for yourself that are most evolutionary for yourself, rather than relying on what you hear in the media or what you hear from other people. You know, you have to do what's what's best for you. So strengthening that is very important. So this app will be designed to help people develop that leadership mindset. Oh, great. That's a big project. I wish you best of luck in that. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So can we have your social media handles and your website? To connect the after yeah, uh, newmavericks.com is our website and then i'm on linkedin and also instagram and facebook just under my name ramon newman spelled r-a-a two a's m-o-n and then last name newman n-e-w-m-a-n great Thank you so much once again, Elma Newman, for coming to the show. Really had an incredible time listening to your expertise on the subject of discussion today. I can only wish you the best in all your future endeavors, right? Thanks so much, Amabola, and uh, fantastic what you're doing and, and enlightening great mindset and, and leadership and self-improvement for everybody. Love what you're doing. Right. Great. I'm humbled by your um, kind words. Roman, thank you once again for your time. It's been a great time having well, my new man on the show today. Now, if you want to catch up with any of my mid episodes, go online and search for Like Well Lived by Mobile as TV on any podcast distribution platforms you come across and do have a worthwhile time, right? Till I come your way, stay safe. Bye for now.